Thank you, Jesus. Welcome to the house of the Lord. It's good. Good way to start the week. Amen? And it's awesome when you think of, uh, we'll be talking this morning of this means war. How many recognize here you're in a little bit of a warfare? <laughs> Always. Amen. You've been born into war zone. And there's strength in numbers. So we pray. One, the odds are quite incredible. I'm not a mathematician by a long shot. But if one can put a thousand to flight and two can put ten thousand, imagine when you get a hundred people coming in agreement and declaring God's kingdom come like we did this morning in worship. Kingdom come will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. And that that word, our statement of faith, whether we sing it or say it, we're coming in agreement. Amen. And then that gives the angel something to work with. And we just don't quit until we win. Amen. We fight till we win. Amen. And just to encourage you, sometimes some fights are quite long and hard, and you wonder, does God hear me? But we looked and got assured from God's word last week that our prayers have a cumulative effect. Amen. And the word is a sword. So we fight. Even Michael, the archangel, took a while to break through in the day, uh, in Daniel's day, when Daniel had a a God perspective, a heaven perspective. And we're going to get a little bit of heaven perspective this morning. And I assure you, it is sounds a little weird, uh, this passage, um, Revelations 12. And you wonder why the Lord uses so many symbolisms. There's been times we've gotten dreams, and I think, well, Lord, if it's this means this and this means that when you look it up you just go why didn't you just give me the dream the way it is and and we see something very um important about God is that in Jesus that he spoke in parables and the disciples said why do you speak in parables why don't you just tell us plainly and he did that for a reason, so that those who had ears, those who really wanted to get it, those whose hearts were pure and, and open towards the Lord, they got it. Amen? Sometimes the Lord had to explain things to him. But the Lord does that. He hides some things. And when we discover them, there's great joy in that. When, you know, when you go on a treasure hunt, when you set kids on a treasure hunt, you'll see great joy when they go, I found another one. And they're shouting, they're rejoicing because they found it and they dug for it. And somehow, something about our human makeup, we value something we've had to fight for. Amen. That, therefore, they tell people not to buy things on credit because you don't get that good feeling anyways. So, whereas if you save up for it and you buy it, there's a satisfaction they've done studies on it. So, you know, there's something about our human nature that delayed gratification or a little bit of digging for us to discover something. Then we found it. And it's like, what joy there is in that. So again, the end times, the Lord brings revelation to us and he gives us the privileges to say after the church of Jesus Christ is gone, has left the planet, uh, we were caught up to be with the Lord forever in the air, then there's going to be an incredible warfare. You think it's tough on planet earth now with what comes at you and some of the battles to face, but when the church is gone, uh, the enemy's going to be really having a heyday. And that's what we've been looking at. What is happening? And so we looked at the six, or sorry, seven seals first. Then we dealt with the seven trumpets. And, um, and now we have this interlude. Every so often we have a, a praise interlude. We see things from heaven's perspective. Causes the angels and everybody to rejoice on earth because more souls have come in each and every state. Age, more souls are being saved, and um, now we're going to be looking at a scene uh, that basically goes through history to give us a perspective, and it's a little bit on the dark side. So, you know, those of us who like science 
sci-fi movies, science fiction movies, you know, with dragons and half people and I don't know, I can't get into those. But um, the new generation seems to like them. There, and I know there's a lot of awesome parallels, but just pretend you're watching this this kind of a movie this morning. So we're going to read the passage first. And um, we want to know, first of all, that there is three wars in this passage alone. Revelations 12, we see first, the first war is against Israel. The second war is against heaven. And the third war is against believers. But here we go. Let's read. And if you like to, you can, if you want an extra blessing, you can read the word out loud. Because blessed, we have a promise at the first of Revelations. Blessed are those who read it and look into it. So let's read. A great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on its head. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who is about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. Then the war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back but he was not strong enough and they lost their place in heaven the great dragon was hurled down that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray he was hurled to the earth and his angels with him then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now has come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before God day and night has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to strip from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and to the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows his time is short. When the dragon saw what he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given two wings of a great eagle so she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness where she would be taken care of for a time, times, and a half a time out of the serpent's reach. Then from his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away with the torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring, those who keep God's command and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. Awesome. Good reading. Blessing on it. So again... Okay, what do you do with that? So I just want to show you, I'm going to go briefly through some symbolisms found in other scriptures. So there is one of the things, um, when you go on a treasure hunt, often you're given clues, right? There's, there's some clues along the way. So a lot of these um, symbolisms are answered in God's word himself. So that when you care to dig deep enough, there it is in the, in the word. So some of those you'll see for yourself. So... 
first of all, I just want to say to you, the beginning and end of all of this is to assure you that the Lord always causes us to triumph. Yes. So isn't that wonderful? We already know the end of the movie. You already know the end of the story. And Revelation is sort of like taking a sneak preview and finding out that he always causes us to triumph. He has already won the victory. Amen. And But in the meantime, we still have to go through uh, the different scenes and that kind of thing so uh, so that that is important to know that we are more than conquerors always we are more than conquerors and the devil hates that when we say that we are more than conquerors through Christ there's always something you can claim there's a word we have the sword we're not left defenseless we are as we'll see in the end we are given armor and God includes us in the in the drama of souls being saved and that's the whole essence of everything why such warfare it's all about souls it's so that none would perish but all would come in and the enemy is a deceiver so he tries to deceive people into living temporal lives and living for the moment if he can snatch someone that's who he is he's a liar he comes to rob and kill and destroy but Jesus has come to give life so when we are engaged in the battle we're fighting for these ones to see until they come into the light that's what it's all about that's why we are in the fight it's about souls and we have uh, the affirmation, we have the promise, we have the guarantee that we always win. Amen. So who is the dragon? Can anybody tell me? Who's dragon? Satan. Satan is a dragon. He's the same dragon. He's the same serpent as was in the garden who tried to deceive Eve, who said, did God really say? So always the enemy, if he can take away that, rob you of the assurance of God's word, he's got, he's got you over the barrel. So this is the same, the same serpent, except he's on steroids, because here we see he's got a great sign appeared in heaven and this he's a humongous dragon with heads seven heads um, who can tell me who the woman is who gives birth to the Messiah so Israel Israel is the woman she gives birth to a son and who's the son Jesus and Jesus was snatched up to God. Amen. He he rose again. That's the ascension. And uh, it, it, we are also given the clue. He shall rule the nations with an iron scepter, which is a reference in Psalm 2. It says that Jesus will rule the nations with an iron scepter so that her, uh, her seed is Jesus. And the child Jesus shall be snatched up to God. And then we see 12 stars. Can anybody take a guess no right or wrong well there is a right or wrong answer but don't be afraid so we have here 12 tribes the 12 tribes of Israel and then Israel will be persecuted in the last half of the tribulation we see time times and half a time three and a half years there is a total of the of the tribulation is seven years in all and um, this is the last half of the tribulation which is three and a half years and so we see the red dragon in verse 3. Um, I, I want to just back up again, rewind. Again, you can take this... Uh, for whatever value you can see, but it's quite interesting and quite amazing if there's no credibility to it. It's like, you know what, it's not the word, but it says two clues here. Verse one, a great sign appeared in heaven. And then again, we see in verse three, another sign appeared in heaven. How many remember what was the sign that Jesus was born? What did the they star, the stars. So um, I have this new little discovery. I, one of the grandkids found it for me. I can talk in the mic in my phone. And I looked up what the signs in astro, astronomy, not astrology, astronomy, about the stars lining up. And you'll see, you know how they, they can say the little dipper and stuff, that much I know. But it's quite phenomenal. There's several sites in there that show the signs in heaven about the 
the woman and the, the stars at her head and the moon at her feet and she was w pregnant for nine months and you see the star right in the middle of her womb and it stays there exactly 12, uh, nine months and then the star is born and it's just, and then there's this dragon with that many heads. It's quite amazing. Again, God said he sets in Genesis 1, he sets the stars in the sky for signs. So, you know, if it's quite a billboard. Here it is. The Father created the heavens and the earth, and he said he put the stars in place for signs. And so we don't follow the stars or wonder what our horoscope for the day is in the stars, but we can see God is getting a message. It's in um, Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God and the earth proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth their speech. There is nowhere in the world their voice is not heard. Their words go out to all of the world. So how awesome is that? That the Lord would show a sign in heaven and say that. Okay, so what is the sign? And so if you do a little digging, you can say, again, it's very plain here, as long as we get the just of it. So, you know, if you say, oh, I don't believe in that, that's your prerogative. You don't have to believe in it. It's not like, you know, your salvation hinges on. It's just kind of cool that God would actually show things in the heavens and, and, and for people who actually study that kind of thing. So anyways, here what we have is the tribulation period at the end. And you might say, well, what has that got to do with me? Well, we have to know our enemy. How many of you know, even in sports, they'll anticipate certain plays, so a so-and-so does this and this. You have to study what moves the enemy wants. And the word tells us we're not unaware of Satan's tactics. If you're unaware of his tactics, you're going to be at a great disadvantage, right? But if you know how he works and what his strategy is, when he's really attacking somebody to say, what is he really after here? And he's really after the seed. So, you know, if your kids are going through warfare and you're wondering what is going on here, why is this child under so much attack? Well, the devil hated Jesus and he was ready with the dragon to swallow that child the moment it came through the womb. That's who the devil is. And we better know his strategy and be up for it. Amen. And prepare our kids so they are going to know if the enemy can come in your home through strife or misunderstanding or whatever. It's like he's got, somebody's opened the back door. So we have to be very aware of what the strategy of the enemy. So again, you are born into warfare, not a Sunday school picnic here on this planet. So don't expect a picnic. You're going to have to fight. And you say, well, I'm not a fighter by nature. Well, you better learn how if you don't want to get your butt kicked. Amen. And so here we are. We are in warfare. And the devil hates the seed. He hated Jesus and he plotted and planned through Herod to kill all the baby boys and he's still working powerfully to kill all the babies. He hates people having babies and raising them up. He hates this army. He hates Israel. He hates heaven. He hates Jesus. He hates the angels. Amen. And there is warfare against Israel today. There is, uh, all you have to do is watch the news every day. There is warfare against Israel. So he's out to devour the child. And when he couldn't, and he turns his attention to her offspring, he turns his attention to the church, he turns his attention here, and he war makes war in heaven. And what happens? He wasn't strong enough to win in heaven. One third of the angels get kicked out, and they're hurled to the earth. Do you know what? Something came to me today. Nobody sins or misses the mark without realizing they are doing that. Those angels knew what they were doing. They knew when Satan said, I will ascend to the heavens and I will be, and he set himself above God. Whenever we set ourselves above God or our plans above God's plans or our ways above his ways, and we say, I'm not going to do this. I know God's word says so, but I'm going to do that anyways. I choose not to do this, what God requires. I'm not going to bring in the tithe, or I'm not going to forgive my brother, or I'm not going to set the first day of the week aside. It's like, you know what? 
You've opened your circle, amen? And there is warfare, then there is incredible warfare. So uh, that just came to me. I thought I would just share that so that you're well aware of if there's ever a lie that crosses your lips or you just don't, you just, there's many ways to lie. A lot of times you just don't say anything. Whenever you're purposely deceiving somebody else and you're not, then you're not being totally honest, then you're lying. Amen. And so we just have to know, we feel the prick when we open our circle. The Holy Spirit, he is so on our side and he helps us. He says, when you're walking in that light, he is in the light and you're going to walk in fellowship with one another. So don't tell me you're okay with God if you're not okay with your brother and sister in the Lord. If you come to church, start worship, you remember your brother or sister has something against you, you go, leave the gift at the altar and make it right. Amen? But the Lord just put in my heart, we don't ever sin and not know that we're sinning. We do. Amen? Amen? If we stay sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And that's so important for us to know that the Holy Spirit is there. And there's that split moment when you're just going to, I'm just going to do it anyways. Well, suffer the consequences. Amen. So that was just a freebie. Sila, mm -hmm. sila, sila. Think about that one. Hallelujah. So there is war against Israel. And there's war in heaven. But the devil didn't win. He got kicked out. But now he's hurled to the earth. And now he's against believers. And he's against, he's enraged. Because the word of God says he knows his time is short. So if there's any way he can take you out, because he's coming to rob and kill and destroy, and there's more than one way to take somebody out. It's not just kill you. Yeah, that's pretty bad when, you know, you lose your life and you live a shortened life and you're taken out before your time. Uh, but there's a lot of robbing and killing and destroying in marriages. And, uh, you know, we are not unaware of the enemy's tactics. The best thing to do is go and find a friend. That's why we are put in the body of Christ and stay accountable. I am struggling in this and this. That's why we have overcomers is because we have to get the word under our belt. Amen. If you want to think of it, it's just you're going to, you're enlisting in the army and you're learning how to fight. You have realized that you're not doing very good in the fight and, and it seems like the enemy is winning. Then you're going to be equipped how to win and have victory because because victory is assured and it is guaranteed. Amen. That's why we have Bible studies. That's why we're equipping the saints here is because we're not going to let the devil win. Amen. And you just tell them, you're not having my kid in Jesus' name. And read my lips. And I will keep fighting because I know the word of God is going to have a fact. Is it can't not. Amen. Amen. And so we just say, Father, you show me. Give me that word this week to, to take into warfare because we're going into the fight. Stop running from the devil. Amen. Stop running. Turn on him and realize that all it takes is one little stone. It took one stone to get Goliath in the right spot. Amen. Sometimes it's that one scripture and you just let him have it and let him have it and let him have it until the Bible says if you submit yourself to God and resist the devil and resist him and res resist him, he will flee. It's a guarantee. Amen. That even rhymes. So there. So we have that guarantee, amen, that our sword is a sharp two-edged sword. It divides between thoughts and intentions and we wage war. So the devil is warring against us and he's warring against believers. And it says, uh, now we want to know how do we triumph? The Bible assures us he always causes us to triumph in Christ. Always. Always. So you just purposely go into war and say, here I am, Lord. I love what Val said years ago. Here I am reporting for duty. And you report for duty. And you put on, we're going to be going to, um, to the uh, passage in Ephesians, Ephesians 6. We got there a little quicker than... But it's important for us to know where we are today and what God is showing us in the word, ultimately that we have victory. And it's really nice when you can take a bird's eye look and say, this is the future. People will be uh, very much 
coming against the enemy um, in the in the last days as each wave of revival sweeps the earth and more and more come to know the Lord as Israel comes to know the Lord they're going to get it eventually when they find out all the prophecies are being fulfilled and we are taken to heaven I'm now presently reading a book by Dr. Jeremiah and uh, it's it's a bit of a novel starting out but it's basically when uh, the church gets raptured and the Antichrist comes out and he's coming against Israel and all these Messian, all these Jews are coming to the Lord in groves and droves and they're giving their hearts and lives to the Lord and they're going to prophecy and taking things seriously and doing some digging thinking what's going on around here. Amen? And so uh, it just is exciting to know how the Lord is going to bring in the harvest. But here we are today and we go through warfare all the time. Again, you're not going to sin unless you just make up your mind. How many times did you know to hold your mouth, hold your tongue, not say anything, not defend yourself, not whatever? A wise man ignores an insult, but you just couldn't ignore it. And before you know it, you got a little war going on. Something you should have took in prayer and you started to, to the Bible says we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So that means your battle's not against each other. Amen? But somehow we think our needs have got to be met through a human being and so many times we got to take it to the Lord in prayer. Go in your closet, shut the door, bring your requests to the Lord with thanksgiving and, and you come out and it might take a while but you go, there, God did it. Have you ever experienced that where you've done it right a few times? Where you're going, that's where the victory is. Amen? Amen. And so we're in a war. Again, you'll ne I'll not stand before the throne of grace and say, I didn't teach you how to put on your armor. When you wake up, it's the first thing you should be teaching your kids. Put on the armor. Well, what if they don't put it on right? The fact is they're practicing. There's all kinds of grace over, over whatever. However you want to put on your armor, you can get this word out if you don't memorize it. But I encourage you... Uh, you get maybe you get dressed different than I do. Maybe you put your socks on first, and I might look at you and go, "That's kind of weird." Or one sock and one shoe, and then the other sock and the other shoe. It's like you know what? Big deal. You put put it on. Just get it on. Realize what the armor is. First of all, you need to wake up and thank the Lord that you're saved. Yes. Put on that helmet of salvation and thank the Lord for the blood. Thank you for the blood of Jesus over my mind, Lord. Thank you for the mind of Christ. Thank you that you give me a spirit of wisdom and insight and understanding, knowledge and power, and the fear of the Lord. Father, thank you. Keep me in perfect peace whose minds have stayed on you today. Help me to remember who I am in you, Jesus. Amen. The blood of Jesus over my heart. Amen. Oh, Jesus, if there's a spot or wrinkle somewhere, Father God, where the enemy's wanting to get in there and... I just pray right now, Father, you can see it. I can't see those spots. I can't see those wrinkles. Forgive me, David says, for my willful sins and also forgive me unintentional sins. And we just pray the blood of Jesus over our heart and pray the love of Jesus Christ will rule and reign in our hearts. Let your love, let your joy, Lord, let your peace and patience, your goodness and kindness and gentleness emulate out of all I say, think, and do, Lord. Keep above all else. Keep your heart for out of it. Flow all the issues of life. Your health and everything is determined about what's going on in your heart. Amen. And Proverbs is full of warnings against bitterness and all kinds of stuff. What horrible things it can rot your bones. There's all kinds of scripture about, look at, look, you can look up some of the Proverbs about that. But you just keep your heart. Amen. Lord, keep me sensitive in my heart towards you. I put on my breastplate of righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And then I take my belt of truth. Holy Spirit, you're with me all day today. You're the one who leads and guides me into all truth. Holy Spirit, I pray to be sensitive to you today. 
Amen. Help me to know what you're saying, to follow your leading. Orchestrate my every step. Grant me opportunity, the, so the shoes, uh, taking the shoes of the gospel of peace. Father, I pray you'd open doors of opportunity for me today. Give me boldness and give me wisdom how to answer. You know what? You have planned for today, and I'm acknowledging you in all my ways, and you're directing my feet. And so, Father, thank you for the shoes of the gospel, the preparation of peace. Now I take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And see, it's my job to make sure I store up that word in my heart so I won't sin against him. It's my job to learn scriptures on healing and my righteousness. It's my duty to learn scriptures so that I've got some kind of weapon to fight with. If you don't know the word, you don't have a sword. Some, I've seen in spirit, have laid down their swords. And they just don't have any weapon whatsoever in their hands. You don't wait until the enemy attacks you in an area where you say, I, I, I better find some scriptures on this. Store up that word. The Lord says, be like a wise workman who needs not to be ashamed, but rightly handling that word. Be like a wise, a wise warrior. Amen? That's who you are. As long as you're on planet Earth, you need to be wearing your armor. And above all else, I take my shield of faith, which is able to conquer every fiery dart of the enemy. So when the enemy comes against me, I say, Lord, and above all else, I take my shield of faith. Thank you for my faith in my salvation. I have faith in your promises that are yes and amen. I have faith, Father God, that you're going to do what you promised to do. I have faith that you're going to command your angels concerning each one of my children and grandchildren in all their ways so they won't so much as dash their foot against the stone. Amen. Take your shield of faith, which is able to count, conquer every fiery dart. So if the enemy comes against your house, you got a shield of faith. My God is greater, like we sang this morning. He's greater. He's stronger. The word is more powerful. Amen. It's not the devil against God. They're not equal. Jesus has already defeated the devil. He's already made him a public spectacle. He's already triumphed him over on, on the cross. He's already triumphed. He's a fallen angel. He's a wannabe. Amen. And uh, the only thing he can do is make you think you're the loser. Amen. It's like, what? And the word says, one day we're going to look at the devil and we're going to think, he's the imp that deceived the whole world? This fallen, shriveled up creature? Ugly to the, ugly to the core? He just is so ugly. He's a fallen angel. He's just like, he's lost all his glory. Hairs fall out, teeth fall out. He's all shriveled up. He's so gross and ugly. All he can do is make you think that he's really scary. He's got seven heads. Why seven heads? The Bible tells us in, in Revelation 17, 12, that the seven, hill, uh, the seven heads are seven hills. And now we get this revelation. I encourage you to read it. There's the seven hills, seven mountains of society, which are um, politics, some people think politics is what makes the whole world go around, but Jesus says, first of all, pray for those who are in authority. Amen? So after you put on your armor and you're dressed for armor and you're praying God's will on the earth, you'll be praying for Trump and you'll be praying for, for our Trudeau. You'll be praying specifically that their eyes be open. They come to know Jesus, that God will send prophets their way and speak to them. Amen? So politics is, it matters what happens. It matters who's in power. That's why, first of all, we're to pray for those about what's, what's actually happening on the earth with Putin and all of them. So we need to pray for all those who are in authority. Then we see finances. There are people whose jobs, like my husband's in finances, and, you know, they might think, you know, money makes the world go around. And it doesn't rule the world. It's just mammon. It's the god of this world, mammon. And yet you'll know that money's kind of important for living on the planet. And so as we, God has his standard of how we're to handle our finances. But that is a mountain in society. And then one is called religion or 
we say Christianity because there is one God and one name above the name of every other God and his name is Jesus. But these are the, this, these are the attacks of the enemy. He comes against us in people and countries and rules and reigns by oppression when wrong people are in power. Amen. He rules wrongly when he takes people's finances and gets it to use against people instead of for people or where they make it a God or an idol and then religion, and then there's entertainment. And we pray, this is so wonderful how many Christian movies there are these days, but entertainment is a part of our, of our is a mountain. Then media and family, that's why Paul prays, I pray to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom every family is named in heaven and in earth. Amen? And so family is the building block of society if there's strong families and strong marriages. Therefore, the enemy, that dragon, is trying to destroy very, very specifically against family. What is marriage? Well, who, what, what is marriage? And who's a, are, are, who are the families? So strong families are incredible mountain of society. And then our education system, again, under such attack. But it's important for us to know what these different areas of society are, that they are the seven heads of the enemy. He has seven heads, and in Revelation 12, it, uh, 17, 12, it says the seven heads are seven hills. And so we are given these clues to know how to pray and how to war. Amen. So that when we pray over these areas, these hills of society, that we realize the importance as the whole world, as all the believers come in agreement, lifting the hands of our politicians, praying uh, God's standard, his kingdom in the finances. Again, it should be supernaturally uh, displayed for all the world to see, which this church is. And I'm so happy to be able to say that we're not leaning on doing things the world's way and building a church the world's way. Therefore, because we're doing it God's way, it's supernatural. They can't understand. This is like, okay, please explain to us how you do this because our church is five times bigger and we can't seem to get the money to pay, to meet the budget. And it's all about the budget. Well, first of all, I don't see anywhere in the Bible talking about a budget. And leaning on your understanding, trying to operate it like a business, it's like, no, because we believe in God's word, bring in the full tithe into a storehouse. I say, well, well that's easy. You know what? All I do, we do is we preach tithing. And we practice tithing, and everybody can see how our lives are blessed, and now everybody can see how your lives are blessed. You will be blessed supernaturally in such a way to saying, how are you doing that? I, uh, you just have a one-income family. Like, how on earth are you doing this? You, what? Your house is paid off? My parents' house is still not paid off. It's like there's going to be signs and wonders in these areas when the enemy doesn't have a rule and he doesn't have a say. Amen. He's like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Just say, you're not having me for lunch. Amen. Though a thousand may fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, these things will not come near my dwelling. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And some areas, you know, your family may have fought certain things, a dragon in a certain area for generations on their health. And, uh, you know, maybe they have a great big list of diseases or they've been in debt for centuries. It's always been lack. Whatever it is, Find the word of God on it. Get dressed in your armor and say, God, for your sake, for your glory, I want to bring glory to you in every area. And there are so many areas in our family that I could show you. I could show you what my grandparents look like, what my aunts and uncles look like on my dad and mom's side. I could show you financially. It's just like, you know what? I'm not going down that road. Amen. <laughs> I gave my life to Jesus. Now I've got his DNA. Now we got his smarts. We're doing things God's way. We're not going to live with this poverty mentality. Sick and tired of it. Looking for oranges on the reduced counter. I was like, nah, you know what? <laughs> nope. 
In Jesus' name, God, if there's a better way, if there's a way I could bring you more glory and honor, I want to do so. Amen. And so we go from glory to glory and strength to strength, and we fight and say, glory to God, we used to be there. We used to be sick and poor and whatever, and friction and fighting, and this is the household I grew up in. This was just normal. It's like not anymore. Amen. Not anymore. We love and forgive and we talk through things. We look not to our own interests, but to the interests of others. And wow, how beautiful and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. This is better. Amen. And what about in your lives? Those are very practical areas. It's not all spiritual spiritual woo kind of warfare. It's where the rubber meets the road. It's how you're teaching your kids and training them up. And I am so thankful. The word says, for those of you who are still struggling in that area, train up a child in the way they should go. And God's promises says, when they come to maturity, they're not gonna, they're not gonna depart from it. So there is another sword we have. It's say, devil, in the name of Jesus, I raise my kids to know the word, to pray, to put on the armor, to live lives in such a way. And in the name of Jesus, you're not having the last word. There's a word that trumps your word. Amen. Amen. We have the sword of the spirit, which is the word. We have the shield of faith above all else, and it conquers every fiery dart. Yes. And the Lord my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Jesus' name. And the Lord always causes me to triumph in Christ. He's already won the victory in Jesus' name. And we just know because we have the guarantee of God's word. Amen. That it will, it will have its effect. It will have its effect. It's like a, a wrecking ball on a building. It might not come down with that first crash. But we know that if it just keeps swinging your weapons, you have weapons in your right hand and weapons in your left. If you're, a, if you're good with a slingshot, then be good with your slingshot. Amen? And yes. target practice on the devil. Just target practice in Jesus' name. Believe the word that it cannot return to God void. It will accomplish everything he sent it forth to do. And you know what? And sometimes you feel like you're down and you're kicked down. It doesn't look like any of the promises. But do you keep on fighting till victory comes? Yeah. Amen. And saying he didn't get the last word, did he? No. Amen. He didn't because we have the word. Amen. There's so many of you. I could just uh, go there. Jeff, we've been praying for your mom every day. We've been praying for Nick and Tina. I know they come through in two great big areas. It's like cha-ching, cha-ching on the devil. Glory to God. We win. We fight till we win. In Jesus' name, sickness, you will go. Barrenness, you will go. Amen. I am blessed coming in. I am blessed going out. The work of my hands are blessed. The food I eat and the water I drink, the air I breathe, it is blessed. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. And you keep on and keep on until the devil says, I don't have a chance. That's right. That's right. Aha. That's right. And we say, you don't have a chance. You don't have a chance in hell, devil, because God's given me a promise. He's given me a word, and I'm just going to keep at it and keep at it. I don't care what they, I don't care what I look like to the world. Yeah, battle axe. Go ahead. Call me a battle axe. I'll be a battle axe until I see and break down those strongholds, those proud obstacles. Amen. We fight till we win. Amen. Anybody ready for the fight? Yes. Amen. Believe me, there are so many promises in here regarding your situation that it can turn around. Yes. And sometimes it doesn't turn around right away. I could have given up on my marriage. I could have given up and settled for many things. But it's like, you know what, Lord? And I want to say to you, this is good news. It might seem like a weird word. But now that I know what those seven, uh, seven heads on this dragon is, it's like, okay, that sounds kind of weird. And then there's this big red dragon, and it has seven heads. 
But then if you just read a little further, there's seven hills of society. Okay, this is what he's against. He's against life. He hates life. And so we just keep on keeping on because the awesome end of the story is Jesus slays that old dragon. He puts him in the pit and forever and ever. Someday that, and they lived happily ever after. Oh yeah, with Jesus. That's going to be the end of the story. Until then, we fight. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. Some, some of you are still in such, a, such an incredible... Um, have you ever feel like you're in the thick of the battle? You're in the thick of the battle? If you're feeling like you're in the thick of the battle, I just want you to pray about one thing. Just pray that one thing. And, and, and if we can come into agreement realizing how powerful that is. Maybe you're agreeing for a cousin or you're agreeing for a child or you're agreeing for your finances or you're agreeing for something. But you know when I say I can set my heart in agreement with you, I can come in agreement with each one. Uh, how many believe God could save your whole family? Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. Amen. If he got you, if he was strong enough, his arms not too short to save. So don't stop praying, asking for the impossible. Because that's where it starts to say, Lord, it looks like this is impossible. But, but I'm just going to take a step today in faith and say, I believe I can be healed. I believe my family can be saved. I believe that we're going to get out of debt and, we and you would that we prosper. So you want us to prosper, God. I believe that you're going to show me how to do that. Amen. I believe we're going to have a happy marriage that's going to glorify the Lord. I believe the Lord's going to lead me to that incredible um, career that I'm just going to love what I'm doing and can't believe I'm getting paid to do this. Amen. What is it on your heart today? I see some are taking this seriously, so I just come in agreement with you, Bruce, in Jesus' name. I'm coming in agreement with your faith today in Jesus' name. I'm coming in agreement in Jesus' name. Let's boldly declare, let your kingdom come and let your will be done. Father, we come before your throne of grace and we boldly declare, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in our lives in every area in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Give him a victory. Victory show. Amen. Victory. You fight for us. You made a way where there was none. Our champion, you fight for us. You made a way where there not our champion is strong in us. The debt we owe, you paid in blood. We will shout it out. We will shout.
because it's a it's a childish story. It's not a childish story. It's a story we all know from being a kid about Joseph and the coat of many colors and the dream that he had in his life when he was 17 years old that he would rule one day. And through the journey, he got thrown into a pit. But he was faithful. And because he was faithful, he got raised to the highest position in Potiphar's house. But through there came temptation. Temptation in the form of Potiphar's wife came to him, and he decided to hold fast to the word of the Lord and to be faithful. But because of that, he got thrown into prison. But instead of wallowing in the sorrows of prison, he was faithful in prison. And the Lord raised him back up, not only to rule the prison, but to rule the entire nation of Egypt under Paul. I encourage you this week just to read that story, just to see what God has to show you in that story. Read it from start to beginning, because as Anita said this morning, the end is already known. The end of the story is there before the beginning of the story even comes into your life. And God might put a dream in your life and you might say, it's not coming. I'm in a pit. I'm in prison. I'm being faithful in some things, but... The answers just aren't coming. Just be faithful in what God has given you. See the story to the end. Don't give up on it today. Don't give up on it tomorrow. And just when temptation comes or times get tough, don't give up on the dream that God has put on your life. Because at the end of it all, we will all reign like kings. I just encourage you this week just to run after the Lord. See where He's going to take you. He's your champion each and every step of the way. Just... Be close to him and he will be close to you. Would you go in his peace and his blessing this week and all God's people say? Amen. Amen.